It's the Holodazzle Show, presented by Comcast. We're excited to bring Holodazzle to you this year, wherever you are. Grab some hot apple cider and your fuzzy slippers and get ready for some holiday cheer straight to your home from our Holodazzle studio. Here are our hosts, Corey Heppola and Camille Williams. Hey there, happy holidays to you alongside my wife, Camille Williams. Can I call you Camille Heppola now? Yes, you can. I'm Corey Heppola. We are excited to be here for the Holodazzle show presented by Comcast and this is gonna be so much fun. It really is. You know, part of the 2020 Holodazzle experience will include the Holodazzle show and we're looking forward to bringing you different Holodazzle centric experiences each week. Uh, So each week, the Holodazzle show will offer a look at local small businesses, bring Santa to your home straight from the North Pole, musical entertainment. We got much more than that. And Camille and I, we're going to host each week. We're going to be welcoming in Kim Johnson. We're going to be welcoming in Marnie Gellner to help in bringing Holodazzle to you. You know, and this is a real treat for us to be here today. We'll get caught up with Santa, who will be visiting from the North Pole. Welcome in the Abbey Alpacas with Real Alpacas. Enjoy a musical performance by Geraldine Steele and the New Standards and hear a special holiday interview with Twins legend, Justin Morneau. And I'm also excited to try some incredible food from Kamarchex, who is a longtime partner of Holodazzle. And I can't wait to see those alpacas. Me neither. You know, along with the Holodazzle show each week, you can find additional engaging content and activities on holodazzle.com. And you can also follow Holodazzle on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more interactive content and challenges. Now, without further ado, gather the kiddos and let's check in with everyone's favorite Holodazzle friend, it's Santa. Come on in. Well, hello, everyone. There he is. Oh, oh. how's everybody doing? We're doing well. Camille, Corey, I haven't seen you for a while. It's been a while. Corey's been naughty. See, I... Oh, well, (laughs) false. We, We talked about. (laughs) <laughs> false accusations here, Santa. False accusations. They happen all the time. And I think that's typically, and you would know this, this is typically from somebody who wants to cover something up. Well, you know, I have found that most of the time when somebody's telling me somebody's bad, it's usually the person who's telling me. Hey! So, but with that being said, <laughs> it's good to see you, Santa. <laughs> So you, Good seeing you. Yes, and you have something going on this weekend. Talk about the book you're going to be reading. Well, this weekend, I'm going to read The Night Before Christmas. And I'm looking forward to that, to seeing all the boys and girls and being able to see them in the way that we can right now with everything the way it is. You know, throughout the year, uh, everybody stays healthy and happy. And we're going to do our part this year what we can to keep everybody happy and and healthy. I think that's at top of everyone's Christmas wish list, right? Is to stay happy and healthy throughout this year. And I think people can learn more about your trip at holodazzle.com. Yes, at holodazzle.com. They can uh, get that on the internet, see anything that's coming up, find out when my next reading is going to be, uh, all of the other information pertaining to holodazzle. Uh, they can also uh, go online, and there's several other addresses and things that they can contact. And then this weekend, I want to make sure that everybody knows that I'm going to be reading The Night Before Christmas. Yeah. Right here. So come on down and have a listen. Yeah. Holodazzle.com, Facebook page. And I hate to do this, but to put you on the spot like this, is that your favorite book, or or do you rank do you have like favorite Christmas books ranked? Do you do that well, or are they all? You know, there are a lot of new books that are coming out right now too that are just a lot of fun. And so this is one of my favorites and that's why I usually read that every year. But we also change it up a little bit. And yeah. We try to bring in some new authors and things that are bringing things that are more pertinent to today's culture and the way things are. Well, Well, I think it's just so amazing that you've actually given your phone number to Holla Dazzle. I know our kids will be calling. They might be calling too much, but you've got to let them know. Maybe they need to, uh, you know, not call so much, but they might be calling you a lot. (laughs) Well, I think that's okay. I think we're going to have, uh, well, I'll have plenty of my elves that'll man the phone, so I think we'll be okay. Very nice. good. Thanks for stopping by, Santa. Yeah. You're very welcome. 
Happy Holodazzle, everyone. I'm Kim Johnson, and we have a real treat for you today. We have some of our furry Holodazzle friends from Upper Midwest Great Danes Rescue, whose mission since 2008 has been to rescue Great Danes throughout our region and find them forever homes. I would like to welcome Jen Kilka from the Upper Midwest Great Dane Rescue, as well as Erica Garnhart here, with some incredibly sweet little fur babies. Oh my gosh, thank you both for coming in and for bringing these precious pups. Tell us who you brought in today. So today we brought in a couple of our representatives of uh, the Upper Midwest Great Dane Rescue and he's gonna share the seat with me he's now. He's a leaner. Um, this is Barney, he's my own personal Great Dane. He's actually gonna be turning 10 years old. Oh. He was my very first rescue that I got at 11 months old and he loves joining us for events. <laughs> He's known as a Harlequin Great Dane, which is, gives this unique black and white pattern that we have. And then we also have joining from us one of our, some of our representatives from one of our two litters of Great Dane puppies that we have right now. They just turned five weeks old today. Cute. And we have on my left, we have Atticus and we have Boo two little boys that are in their group. And then on my right, we have little <laughs> Scout, the little representative girl of our puppies. To kill a mockingbird crew. Correct. I love it. So tell us about how it's been for you. 2020, we've all heard of this pandemic uh, pup where there are so many animals that are being adopted right now because people have the time to take care of them. Have you seen that as well? Absolutely. We've seen not only an intake uptake going on hmm. where we're seeing a lot more dogs come in. We average each year between 110 to 115 Great Danes that come in. We just brought in 114 yesterday. Wow. So, and we're not even all the way through November. So we're seeing an, a, a definitely an increase on dogs coming in, as well as people not having the resources to care for their dogs mm -hmm. right now. You know, they've been out of work or they've been low on resources and they're looking for assistance and funding. And that's what rescues are not just about bringing in the dogs that have gone fallen on to, um, abuse situations and things like that, but it's also about helping people who've fallen on hard times, helping them find food resources, medical care, veterinary care, that sort of thing for the dogs. And I think people who unfortunately have to surrender their animals, which I can't imagine how hard that would be, uh, they would like to know that they're gonna be going to homes Absolutely. as fosters while Absolutely. they find their forever home. Absolutely. Um, tell us about the Great Dane breed. Obviously, these are some big dogs right now. This little girl, she's small, but I can tell by the size of her paws, she's not going to be for a long time. No. Um, they're actually, surprisingly for their size, a lot of the times the questions we get is how much do they eat yeah. and do, how much exercise and things like that that are going on. The reality is, is if you're feeding them a good quality food, they don't eat nearly as much as you would think they would for their size. This guy right here eats about four cups of food a day. What? I'm not kidding at all. Um, and it's about feeding quality huh. over quantity. It's it's really, okay. even the same as it is for us. Portion control is important and it's about the nutrients they're getting over anything else. Uh, the other thing is, as Great Deans, while they do enjoy going for walks and having exercise, they are notorious couch potatoes. They enjoy ha having the seat on the couch with you and just having a nice belly rub. Mm. The best way to describe them is a big old furry toddler. Well, you know, it's nothing like having a nice warm dog to keep you warm right while you're Absolutely. snuggling up on the couch. Well, Absolutely. we love seeing the Great Danes at Holidays Live every year. This year, we're just grateful that you could bring these cute little guys in uh, to the studio. Thank you so much for coming in and happy holidays to you both. Thank you. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free internet and laptops. And parents are seeing an impact. And now we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi enabled safe spaces to study, so more students can be ready for anything. Can I do some homework here? The Yeti and I have moved outside. That's where Holodazzle is supposed to be. So we're out here and every year Holodazzle features some amazing food. So it wouldn't be the Holodazzle show without checking out what's on the grill. And, and we have one of the staples of Holodazzle. And really since, since it arrived in Loring Park in 2015, and it has been Kramarchuk's. And we are here today with, with Nick Kramarchuk. Nick, how are you? Good, thank well, you, you. You've got a great smell going on here. Yeah. What, what do you have? So I have a uh, Holodazzle Bratwurst that we collaborated with the Holodazzle um, party. And 
It's a pork bratwurst with wild rice, cranberries. We finish it off with uh, mushroom gravy and some French's onions to get into the holiday spirit. Well, and it's it smells great, but I, I know this is a part of, of the family business, right? You've been a family business. It, it started with your grandparents? Yes, correct. Yeah, well, they came over after World War II from Ukraine, and uh, there was a large population of Eastern Europeans in Minneapolis that kind of missed the flavor of their home country. So... My grandparents had a little expertise in making the food and making sausage and uh, decided to provide the neighborhood with a sausage source. And the rest is kind of history. Yeah, the area needed a flavor, yeah. you know, a hometown flavor or a home country flavor, brought it over here. So, I mean, I, I imagine, did they, have you ever talked to them or, or had these conversations of like, you're still around 65 years later? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we've seen a lot of changes, you know, especially recently. But uh, we've, we've got a loyal customer base and people that kind of enjoy our products every holiday. And we're, we're grateful for that. So sausage, that's a, part of, that's a part of the flavor. Can you show us what's happening here? Yeah, what so, do you got when cooking? Uh, our stuff mostly is all pre-cooked. So all you're doing is reheating it. You're just putting it on the grill, uh, pretty low heat for about five to 10 minutes per side. This one's been going uh, for a little while. I think it's ready. So we're going to take that off the grill. And you can purchase this uh, sausage in the in the deli to take home and prepare, or you can also come in our restaurant. You just can't dine in, so okay. uh, you'd have to take it to go. But the way we do it in the restaurant is we have some of our uh, mushroom gravy here, so we're going to put that on, and of course some French's fried onions, and that you get the the richness of the gravy, the crunch of the onions, and then the kind of sweet savoriness of the bratwurst. I like what you did with the bun there. Yeah, toast the bun so the gravy doesn't soak into it. People are like seeing this, they're like, okay, I, I got to get that. Can they go to, or give you a call and say, I want the Holodazzle special? Yeah, they can order online or, or phone order. And we've already had a lot of interest. People wondering, when is this going to be out? And yeah. this, to be honest, I love the Polish. I love the brats, but this I look forward to every year. It's one yeah. of my favorites. Nick Kramarczuk from Kramarczuk's a staple in the area. Nick, it's good to see you. Thanks for being see here you. today. Thank you. Well, hi, everyone. It is Kim Johnson here with Holodazzle. And, you know, we are so excited this year because we're going to be bringing you DIY uh, do-it-yourself demonstrations every weekend. And I'm so excited because we're starting things off with Kathleen Sheridan with Origami and You. Kathleen, it is so good to see you. How are you? I'm great. So good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for being with us uh, to start things off. So on Saturday, you're going to be giving a demonstration. Tell us a little bit about yourself and about Origami and you. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, well, actually, I started off my career as a Spanish teacher and through Origami USA, I was getting different jobs and um, requests to teach origami. Um, it's been my passion since I was in fourth grade. Wow. So um, I six years ago, I made the switch and I started teaching origami. And I give classes, workshops, um, birthday parties. And actually, it's been a really easy transition to do these things online. Um, sometimes it's even better because I have a special camera where I can give a top down view and you can just see my hands. So huh. um, my business is still going strong. That's so good to hear. We're so happy uh, for you about that. So give us a little bit of a teaser. What can we expect on Saturday? Oh, great. Yes, I, I just love to teach um, holiday themed models. So again, okay. thanks for having me at this time. Um, we are going to be making a star. Ooh. Um, this is with the special origami paper, but it certainly doesn't have to be. Um, it could be just plain solid colored paper and it'll still turn out great. So this is if you have origami paper. You could also use wrapping paper, just giving people ideas so they would be ready. Um, I also cut up old calendars. Oh, wow. uh, who uses yeah. a calendar? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> if you do, um, and it doesn't matter if there's writing on the other side. Or this is copy paper that I just decided to throw some um, ink pad colors on. So really don't don't think you can't do it if you don't have the right paper. So All right, we'll make sure that we get our paper in order for the demonstration on Saturday. And yeah. Kathleen, thank you so much. We're looking forward to it. And of course, everyone can catch the demonstration uh, on holodazzle.com or on the Holodazzle Facebook page. Kathleen, thank you and happy holidays. Thanks, happy holidays to you.
with Haladazzle, and I'm excited to be joining you from the farm with the Abby Alpaca. I'm here today with my buddy Shadow, who's going to be joining us as we talk a little bit more about the Abby Alpaca. Isn't he adorable? Well, one of the ways that the Haladazzle helps to support our community is providing an opportunity for small local businesses to bring exposure to their business and to also sell their holiday gifts. And so we are out at the farm with the Abby Alpaca, who is one of our Haladazzle Shops vendors. They have amazing products that are great for holiday gifting. In addition to Shadow, I am joined by Ruth Kincaid. Ruth, it's a pleasure to be out at the farm with you. Thanks Thank you. for having us. So you have amazing products mm -hmm. here for holiday gifting. Tell us about a few of your favorites. Oh, one of my favorites and the latest thing we have is our Arctic Wanderer sock. They're uh, much longer and they actually go up to the knee. And they are not only alpaca on the outside, but incredibly thick alpaca on the inside. So they're very, very warm for those cold winter days. Yes, and also wonderful for boots in the Minnesota yes, they winter. Are. Yes, they are. <laughs> Next we have our dryer balls, which everyone is loves. You put them in the dryer with your wet clothes. They soak up the uh, moisture, and uh, once your clothes are about 95% dry, they start to release steam, which takes the wrinkles out of your clothes, and many of the clothes you can just take and hang up right from the dryer. They're fabulous. I know our boys love those. They love being the one to find them in the folding laundry and then toss them back into the laundry baskets. They're great <laughs> and they can't hurt anyone. That's right, that's right. Well, I know you have some new yarn this year. Tell us about we that. Do. These are the colors we have. We can mix them, but this is our latest. It is a thick and thin yarn. So Beautiful. when they're applied together, they look like hand spun. Beautiful. And they make an incredibly beautiful gifts of knit gifts like sweaters and mittens. I love that. Tell us a little bit about some of the benefits of alpaca in these different products. Oh, sure. Alpaca is three times warmer than wool. It is softer than cashmere and it is hypoallergenic, so you don't get an itch that you would for wool. Oh, I love that. Tell us about the beautiful scarf you're wearing. This is an embalage scarf. It is hand done by the Abbey. We have several different colors. Shadow here. likes it. And <laughs> yes, Shadow loves it. <laughs> They're, they're wonderful. Ones. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have on some of the gloves that you have made. They're yes. amazing. They are very soft and warm, good for kind of all seasons, these fun gloves. They are, and they're great for inside and typing as well as outside. That's right. Well, Ruth and Shadow, it has been such a pleasure to be with you on the farm today. Again, we are out at the Abbey Alpaca, one of our great Holodazzle Shops vendors. You can search for all of these products. You can shop the Abbey Alpaca by visiting holodazzle.com and finding all of your holiday gift ideas. We hope that you'll visit us at holodazzle.com. Thank you. This time of year, we all have our favorite things. So throughout Holodazzle, we will be checking in with some of our favorite Minnesota sports personalities to hear about their favorite things during the holiday season. To kick things off this week, Marnie Gellner caught up with Minnesota Twins great Justin Morneau. Happy holidays, everyone. We are really happy to be able to bring some holiday cheer to you since you can't come to us this year. And we are thrilled to have Twins great Justin Morneau help us with that because Justin is actually apparently wearing holiday cheer. What are you wearing? What is that, a jacket? 
Oh yeah. And a tie that matches. So it's, uh, it's one of those things we do around our house around Christmas. Uh, there's nothing quite like embarrassing your kids and, and they get embarrassed to see their dad dressed up like, uh, in a cat suit. So there you go. So, uh, we love the holidays around here. Does the whole family have some sort of outfit or just you? Oh yeah. I, this is, it's not really my department. This is more, uh, my wife's department of, uh, making sure we're all dressed festively in pajamas and different outfits and everything else. So it's fun. Uh, this is actually what usually what I wear to Christmas dinner. So this is, uh, this is as formal as it gets around here. So we like to have fun. A cat jacket. Nice yep. touch. Well Living done. <laughs> Since you grew up in Canada, obviously we celebrate most of the same holidays. Thanksgiving is different, but for holiday traditions, what is a Canadian holiday tradition that you grew up with that maybe we don't do in the States? Um, well, there's a couple things, but I think for me it was always because Thanksgiving for us is in October. So we always had turkey. I always had turkey on Christmas and then uh, marrying into a, an American family, they don't really, they usually do ham on Christmas and because it's so close to Thanksgiving and Turkey, you know, twice in a month is a big deal. So, but I make sure that we continue that tradition on here in the United States and in Minneapolis of having a Turkey on Thanksgiving. So I can feel a little bit at home as well. Okay. So you bring some of the Canadian Christmas, you make sure that the, the holiday spirit from Canada is permeated in Minnesota. I like yeah, it. Well, Santa Claus is Canadian. He does live in the North Pole, so. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we Americans, we forget that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for keeping it straight. What about a holiday movie? Something you have to watch you and your family every year? It's a tough one. I, I had a you know, tough time deciding between A Christmas Story and Home Alone. I love Elf. Oh. It's, it hasn't been around as long. It's funny. It's maybe a little older than the, than the young kids in our house. Uh, will stick around long enough to watch. But I, I think Christmas Story, if I had to pick one, it's Christmas Story. Um, I know you're an outdoorsman. I know you embrace the winter. What is your favorite get outside, don't care how cold it is, winter activity? Well, growing up, as we talked about earlier, growing up in Canada, especially on the West Coast, we actually didn't have frozen hockey rinks. It was you had to drive either into the mountains or a few hours out of downtown Vancouver to find the frozen rink. So the first time I actually skated outside was in Minnesota. I grew up playing hockey, but I'd never skated outside until I came really? to Minnesota. So one of the things I always wanted as a kid was my own hockey rink in the backyard. So we have that. Uh, and it's one of those things that it's a true ratio of, of 10 to one. It's 10 hours of work for every hour you get to skate. And, and this past week, that's what I've been doing. We got a, a little, excited we jumped the gun in october and then it got cold and we decided that we were going to put the rink up and and then all of a sudden it was 70 degrees 70. <laughs> and it was uh it was a huge puddle so this last week has been that but you know what I, I spend you know four five six hours out there during the day when the kids are at school and you know i take a lot of pride in my rink and and uh having a, a good place to skate for whoever wants to come over 10 hours of work to one hour of fun though is it worth it oh of course yes it's it's one of those things that when you skate outside on that outdoor rink and you got the sun shining and everything else, it's, there's no, nothing quite like it. I don't think, uh, you know, people, some people like to ski, some people like to cross country ski, snowmobile, ice fish, whatever it is. But for me, being able to skate outside in my backyard and, and play a little pickup game, uh, is, is, you know, the, the fun part of winter for me. And you mentioned the ham Turkey controversy, but what, is your favorite holiday food and i'm talking like full meal or like this certain cookie or something like that just it really says holiday time to you and you stuffing. love it. Stuffing. stuffing stuffing for sure stuffing with gravy on top of it and not not too crazy stuffing it doesn't need celery and a bunch of crunchy stuff in it i'm, I'm just basically the bread and the turkey and you know mix in a couple other seasoning and everything else but that to me you know you can have turkey during the year and Stuffing is one of those things that, that really uh, lets me know that it's Christmas time. It's a special occasion and uh, I get to eat, uh, you know, something that I really want to eat. So that for me, without stuffing, it, it's just not the same. Just keep it plain though. Big ball of mush. That's all yeah, you need. Pretty much. Yeah, just bread with gravy on it <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that you would like to say to Minnesotans and those people watching just your holiday wishes for everyone who in a really, really strange holiday time. Yeah, I think uh, this year, 2020 started off crazy for everyone. It was, uh, it's been a challenge throughout the year to, you know, to find things to do, to 
you know, keep your spirits up and, and hopefully everyone is able to stay healthy and make it through this, this holiday season. And we can turn the cor- corner in a new year in 2021. And, and hopefully we get fans back in the ballpark and everyone gets back to their, their normal routines. But, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing that we wish for everyone is just a uh, good health. And, and if anyone does happen to come down with, with COVID or, or an illness similar to that, that, that they are able to get through it as well as they can and keep other people around them healthy and safe. And I think that would be my wish for the holiday season. I think that's a lot of people's wishes. Thank you so much, Justin. I appreciate it. Happy holidays to you and to your family. Thanks, Marnie. Happy holidays. One of the biggest reasons to take the family out to Holodazzle each year is the fabulous entertainment featured. This year is no exception. Our first Holodazzle performance presented by the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District. We are pleased to be joined by Jerlyn Steele and the New Standards. This great group comes together annually over the holidays in Minneapolis to help us celebrate. And this year, we are so excited to have them here at Holodazzle. Welcome to the stage, Jerlyn Steele and the New Standards.
and I had a great time kicking off the Holodazzle season with you during episode one of the Holodazzle show presented by Comcast. And thank you all for joining us today. And this is a time to be thankful, right? Yeah. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. And I'm thankful I don't have to social distance from you. That's right. By you. We are thrilled to be a part of this to bring joy to you and your loved ones this holiday season. So make sure to tune in to Holodazzle.com or the Holodazzle YouTube channel over the next four weeks for three more fun episodes of the Holodazzle show each Thursday through December 17th. Yeah, and check out Holodazzle.com for more great content, including Holativities presented by XL Energy to entertain both the young and the old during this time of year and engage with us by visiting Holodazzle's social media channels. That's where you'll find more content, including short videos, throwback content, and interactive activities on social media. Yes, happy holidays to you, and we will see you next time on the Holodazzle show presented by Comcast. Have a great weekend.